Okay, so Tori took out the collards over here and now she's broad forking. And then we're supposed to get compost delivered today. So we'll amend this and get compost on it and then get the first uh, bed of turmeric planted. We'll probably leave this one um, until next week so we can harvest off it this week. So this tool is used to mimic deep tillage without actually inverting the soil and helps aerate it, helps the drainage, and we'll, it's gonna loosen the soil up so it should help the um, turmeric roots grow better. I'm gonna go ahead and put the amendments on here. So it's brother male, alfalfa male, and azomite. And I'm gonna put it directly on the soil and then take the BCS over like just a half inch and then we'll put compost on top, then plant into that and then put leaves over everything. So Tori's heading out to scoop up stuff on the weed mat. So around all of our plots, we have the weed mat like this. And the reason for that is Bermuda grass and the other uh, plants that are in our lawn. And they creep over like this. And since it rains so much here, it will, it will grow over the weed mat. And the Bermuda grass will grow over the weed mat and into the plots and then it will start to take off there too. And we've spent a lot of time going through and hand weeding out the Bermuda grass. So this year, um, we're gonna try and stay ahead of it. I definitely got behind it last year. The edger attachment for the, the trimmer and just do it like an edge, like a sidewalk edge, like how you'd maintain a landscape. And so I'm gonna come through with the weed whacker and then put the edger on and get a defined edge here and try and keep that like this around everything all year. So like as like a, like a cultivating day that we know we're gonna be cultivating, I can come out here and uh, edge everything, and keep it clean. And we have customers that come here, so it also helps it keep it presentable. So yeah, we have to wait for the compost to get here. It's coming in, in like an hour and a half or so. Then we can get back to the turmeric. So this is the food forest area that we're working on. And the goal here is to thin this line right here. See how thick those pines are down there? Uh, Lewis and I, that's a friend that I used to work with when I did tree work. Uh, we both worked for Bartlett, so they've started their own business. And when we started the farm, I worked with them part-time uh, for extra money to, to help fund building the farm and stuff. So this thick line we're gonna take out and make it thin like this. This is just what I've been able to do when I can, but uh, we're running out of time. So we're just gonna fell all these this way, and then we'll winch them to the chipper and chip them into the woods. Microgreens? Yep. They look really good this week. The warmer weathers help so much. Cucumbers. Back to the rain now. How about this rain? It's kind of weird. <laughs> After not having it for, what'd you say, the record was like 14 days or something? Yeah. Yeah weird but it's good for the plants mm -hmm. it started raining last night so we've got like a quarter of an inch yeah the compost the compost actually came yesterday uh, and then we're supposed to do tree work today and then it's raining so Lewis and Sean can't make it up we're gonna do it tomorrow everything we planned this week has gotten switched I know. <laughs> okay, that's done and ready to plant. Trying to work through the rain here, so um we just put this compost down here in plot three. Uh, we took the cabbages out, now we're gonna put beets in. Uh, so fresh compost, it's dry too. So Tori's getting the seeds right now. 
We found that our customers don't really prefer the larger cabbages because they're so huge and a lot of times they're only cooking for two. As blurry, sorry there's stuff all over my camera lens. Uh, anyways, yeah, so the smaller cabbages, so they, they grow for less time and then they prefer those over the bigger ones. Flipping beds. Head lettuce. Well, it's different for us because we bought those mother plants that I showed in the last video from uh, Turmeric Todd down in Charlotte. And so the difference is this is like a five year old producing plant and he's been, he's been growing these for like five, six years. So this was the setup. This is just leaf cover and we just came in and planted them. So here's one of them. Uh, some are bigger, but this is probably about the average size. So we dug the hole and then I have uh, seaweed, endomycorrhizae, EM1, and uh, the prebiotic solution. Um, it's called Ultra. I'll show you guys that product here once I see some results. Um, seems to be doing pretty good with the onions, so. But I took, the, I took this and dipped the roots in that so that it's all connected on here so that it gets direct contact. And then we planted it just up to here, so this top is showing. And then put the leaves over it. And on top here, on top here is just the two layers of row cover. Okay, so we got two layers of row cover. And with our temperatures coming up, so we got like, uh, we got like, 70 50 60 40 kind of thing going on from my understanding this is a zone 9 plant and so i'm just trying to keep the heat and warm the roots up and hold it underneath all those leaves so the day the day warmth will make a big difference overnight and then yeah so it should be sprouting like when we don't really have much of a, a freeze chance left and then the foliage won't get damaged what Todd did for these plants was he would grow these out at his place and then and then he would harvest what he needed for the week every week and then use the ground as storage all winter. So I'm not worried about these guys. You know, like the coldest temperatures coming up is like 32. I'm not worried about it affecting these at all. But if I were to have them like in the nursery and then they all start sprouting early and then we put it out and then the that top could get damaged so this is I don't know this is this is just something that makes sense listening to how and especially since he's done it this way with the plants for the past five years they're already adjusted to it and you don't have to worry about something coming from a warmer climate that you're then putting in uh, a colder climate these plants have had five years of time to adjust and uh, get used to it essentially so it's a it's a bigger investment to buy those than it is just to buy uh, the other things from it's called like biker dude i think in hawaii um but the yield would be greater and um todd just became a realtor so uh it's good to keep the money local and instead of sending it somewhere else even if it is more expensive um it's still good to do that one of the things that's cool and uh it's just something cool to know about so so the soil really is active at like 55 degrees or so and when like banana trees start growing and the comfrey starts coming back, you know the soil temperature's up. So like, so your crops will start growing faster, your amendments will start to be digested by the soil life. Uh, if you add more soil life, you know that it's it can start doing its thing. And another thing is in the tunnels, since they're a microclimate and they're a little warmer, you see stuff like this. So Bermuda grass, you know, this is probably a month ahead in the tunnel. And so that's like our number one enemy out here. So just little things like that, that you can look at and see. Obviously the trees are blooming and stuff, but um, some more sensitive plants like the banana and uh, even you know, the tumor could probably be really similar.
I'm working on harvesting while Casey and Lewis are doing that. Just got some zucchini, some dino kale, there's some Swiss chard down here. Um, then I'm about to go get some Asian greens and some other stuff. Kaleettes, kale mix. It's like bubble gum. Nice. So it looks way different out here, especially with the chips. So the food forest project here, uh, you can see how much more sun's getting in there versus literally none before. And so uh, for you guys that have been following along with this, you know, we can have, we can have berry bushes here, other trees, blah, 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 whatever we want to plant and it will have the sunlight now. Also this row of pines right here, um, I had thought based on the way the land looked right here where the nursery tunnel is and then there's just kind of, kind of gentle slope and it goes through the woods too when, where those pines are at. So I had, I had thought that the previous people that lived here, um, they used to plant sunflowers out here and I figured he came through with his tractor and just like they did a path of something right here and um, when they stopped planting it those pines just grew up there. We found an aerial shot from 1998 and this section right here is completely open. So yeah, it's not even really a natural edge to the woods. It's where it was disturbed really heavy next to something that wasn't disturbed at all, the woods. And then these pines grew up like weeds in place of that. So if y'all remember when I was coming through here with Nick, uh, it was in this area. We've already set up a lot of work. <laughs> You're such a dork. <laughs> um, it was really, really thick. So what we did today was uh, Lewis ran the chipper and the winch, and then I felled all the trees, and then I cut the tops of them off, which these are pretty sure they're Virginia pines. They're really, really garbage trees. So we just chipped the tops. And, and so that gives us our mulch for up here. And then in here we have the leaves from the city that came in the fall and we'll spread those out in through this area. I wish it was sunny today so that I could have seen how the sun was getting through everything, but some of those tall ones with the canopy up here uh, in the heat of summer, those are really gonna help still when the sun is coming at, it's kind of hard to do, when the sun's coming at this angle, that's gonna help shade this stuff and not overexpose it. Because the trees have grown in the shaded uh, environment for so long, that, that extra sun exposure can cause issues. So it's like being sunburned basically, but for a tree. So yeah, this is cool. Uh, these are pine chips, whether or not they actually make the soil more acidic, we'll see uh, as they break down. But I think for this area, I like raspberries, blueberries, the stuff likes acidic soil anyways. Yeah, there's mulberries, there's figs, service berries, that's my favorite tree. Different medicinal stuff we could put in here. There's a lot of cool things we can put into this area. And a lot of that stuff, so I had uh, Lewis come out one, I was kind of behind, and two, uh, <laughs> with the winch. So we used to work together, but like, I know the winch and how fast it can get stuff done. And I didn't really want to haul all those, cut them up and haul them over there with the four wheeler and burn them and all that stuff. But the logs, the main, the main trunks and the logs, if we can burn those, whether it's for bonfires or for biochar, that's the plan for that. A lot of the rest of the work is just small, those small skinny taller removals, which are 
nothing. I mean, you can cut those in like four pieces and move them. And then like things like this. So we can't really just fell this one because it has this big branch and it's growing right over that mimosa, which we want to keep. And yeah, so this has to be climbed and pruned. This next one can be climbed, pruned and thinned. And yeah, we can just make adjustments here and there, how the sunlight moves through here and and uh, it's a long process. But uh, it wouldn't be that long if we could focus on it for like a week, but it's really not realistic right now. So if you all are in the Charlotte area and you want some tree work done, check out Sean and Lewis's business at Southern Rooted Tree Care. Really good arborist and Sean is a really, really talented climber and uh they also do they don't don't they just they don't just take trees down and prune them they also do cabling um, root invigoration so if you have a tree that looks that looks sick or whatever uh, sean can come out and look at it and then um, a lot of times if it's not a pest or a fungus it will be a soil issue and they have an air spade which is a six like a six foot gun that you hook up to an air compressor and then you set up mats around the base of the tree and you go through and you blast away the compaction with the air and then you come in with amendments and things like that and mulch and and the trees respond really well i used to do those when i worked at bartlett and it's one of those cool things that isn't really common knowledge i guess so uh, i'll leave their info in the in the description too and yeah that's just the charlotte north carolina area what you think, George? It's so open. Yeah. That was a lot of work. It looks way different. It does. washing pack pretty good harvest this week yeah March vegetables yo Emma Emma complained she wasn't in a video so here. I just thought I was just kidding oh okay over the bed I'm like I'm gonna fall yeah it's muddy onion time I want two of them okay here's the onion process here Taking them out, and then that's our solution. It's uh, endomycorrhizae, the prebiotics, and EM1, and then it's just four rows at six inches. Got an inch of rain. Just had the first storm. Yeah. Hey, that ditch is working really well. So this is what we're gonna eventually dig up on for this extra water. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah, and yesterday when we were uh, pulling the chipper and Lewis got stuck, so now it's all messed up and hitting the kohlrabi bed. All 
Alright guys, so if you see this in bloom, uh, it's edible. It's pretty good. This is a forsythia. <clears throat> and the way to identify it is it has a square stem. And you can feel it here. And opposite arrangement, so the leaves come out the same spot. But the square stem is always a giveaway, along with the dots on there. All right, it's delivery o'clock right now. So we, uh, we have a busy day tomorrow. We normally deliver to the Honey Hog Friday mornings, but tomorrow's gonna be so packed. Um, we're just gonna take it now, and we haven't eaten anything at all today, so it's also barbecue o'clock. So we've been taking this amount of greens to the Honey Hog every week for, I think, right around 120 weeks now. We also take um, collards, and uh, we'll do onions and tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, stuff like that. Alright guys, today's going to be a really busy day, bed prep, uh, pre-orders, prep for market, customers coming from 3 to 6 to the farm, uh, preparing for the cold that's coming tonight and tomorrow night, and a lot of other stuff in between. Keeping cover here in the basement, and... That may seem like a lot of extra effort to bring them out, but can you see how much we spend on seeds a year? All right, we added some stuff. Putting them in the basement, because it's a stable temperature, will pretty much guarantee uh, almost perfect germination every time. We have an old fridge down there with a crock pot in it, and we can, and neighbor Phil helped us uh, hook that up to an old thermos. He's the electrician, I don't know how he did it. But it would heat up to a certain temperature and then shut the crock pot off. So then it would stay at like 75, 80 degrees. So if we're trying to germinate cucumbers or tomatoes, we can use that too. But you can see this germination on the bunching onions. That makes the extra walking well worth it. How's the pre-order is going? Good. Get started. <laughs> okay, just got some amendments here. So we get uh, stuff from Deerfield Supplies. This is where we get irrigation and uh, some other things, but you'll have to call that phone number and ask for a catalog because they don't have a website. This is a bag of kelp meal. I'm excited to try that. All right, Emma, we got a lot to do today. A lot. <laughs> Which 
Okay guys, the markets went really good yesterday. It was pretty busy. Big thanks to our customers for coming out. It was kind of cold and windy. But yeah, we sold just about everything. It was a pretty big harvest this week and it gets us excited for spring. So yeah, that was a long video. Uh, a, lot, a lot happened this week and uh, <laughs> it'll be like that for a lot of weeks to come. So thanks for watching.